Good Morning Fellowship Church. It's so good to see you all. Hope your 2021 has been blessed so far. Welcome to another week of our weekly worship service online here at Fellowship. It is our endeavor to love God, love people, and impact the world. And this morning you got your host, it's me, John, and this is my wife, Renisha. <laughs> Yes, it is so great to be with you all this morning. We are in for such a treat. Pastor Tony is beginning a brand new series. So you want to stay tuned for that. After a word of prayer, we will have worship and get on with our service. So bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this day that you have given us. God, we thank you for this opportunity, Father, to just worship you again. God, we ask now that your spirit move and fill these places and spaces of every viewer that is watching god i ask that you impart something into their lives that will change their situations change their mindset god remember who they are in you and remember how much they love you god so we thank you now that you have already taken over this service god that you are having your way right now lord god so bless the service now and bless us all. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made and we just came to rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody happy this Sunday? Anybody glad to be alive this morning? Hallelujah. Come on and give God a praise right where you are. Let him know, hallelujah, that he deserves Come on. 
solid rock I stand no other hell I know all of the ground is sinking sand yes, I trust in you alone yes father
Again, we do hope that you have enjoyed worship, that the Spirit of God is moving wherever you are, that you are able to lay down a load, pick up some joy, because mm, that's the goodness of Jesus. Listen, if you want to experience this worship service or the preaching, the teaching that Pastor Tony is about to give throughout the week, you can do so by staying connected with us. So we're going to give you some ways that you can stay connected. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there are some ways for you to go ahead and reach out um, to us. So that's on Facebook. That's on Instagram. We have a YouTube now. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you check us out. All right. And now it's that time of the week where we get to give. And if you're like me, you've been going through your taxes, and me and my wife have been glad to look and see that God has blessed us, and we've been able to give more this year than we were last year. And it's our hopes that we're able to give more, just being able to plant uh, a seed into what we believe, and also to be able to participate in the mission of God as he gave himself and gave it all. Yeah. He asked us just to give a piece of what he gives to us. And so if you want to give to our church, here are some ways that you can do that. First, if you're a church member, you know about the band app, you can give through that. Uh, secondly, there should be a link down below in the comment section. Follow that link and there are instructions right there. And then the last thing is there's a phone number with our text to give function. Super easy. All you do is text the word give, put a space in the amount you like to give, and you'll be all squared away. And we thank you so much for your giving, for partnering with us to participate in our mission to love God, love people, and impact the world. And now, y'all, we're so excited because it's time for the Word of God. What's up, God's people? I got a message for you. All my brothers out there, happy Father's Day. We celebrate you today, man of God, my brother, my cousin, my uncle, whoever you may be. If you have brought children in this world and you are fathering them, you are raising them, or whether you're mentoring a young man or a young lady, whatever it is, we applaud and we salute you today. Uh, because uh, where would the world be without fathers, right? And so we are celebrating all fathers today. Uh, I don't care whether you get socks or you get the same old cologne, whatever it may be. We celebrate you today as a father and a man of God. My name is Pastor Tony. I'm the lead pastor here at Fellowship Church, and we are ecstatic. You decided to spend your valuable time here with us today, and we've got a word for you today, and it's going to be kind of geared toward, uh, towards fathers today. Uh, pray that you are blessed by the worship and praise that went forth, and hope you're having a blessed day. Hope you're having a, you've had a blessed week, and you're treating dad real good. Now, I'm going to tell you the same thing my dad always tells people, uh, used to tell people when he was pastoring. If your dad is anywhere alive on planet Earth, I don't care what he's done. I don't care what he was. I don't care what he wasn't. You reach out to him and you give honor to whom honor is due. Uh, you don't have to agree with everybody and like everything, everything that people does, uh, that people do. Uh, in order to give honor, uh, that's a biblical mandate. 
to honor and cherish. It, that is the first commandment that comes with a promise that, so that we can live long lives, uh, that we obey our mother and father and that we honor them, okay? And so that doesn't mean you got to come over and eat half crumpets and tea all the time, but let's, let's do the right thing. Let's put things aside and let's honor those uh, who uh, God has given to us, okay? That's my soapbox for that today. Now, let's get into this word. We are, um, are wrapping up a series uh, that we've been talking about called It's Intentional. Hope you've been blessed by it. We've been in it a good while uh, because there's so many uh, just nuggets and so many dimensions to it uh, that we want to share. Um, and we pray that you've been blessed with it. If you have not seen it, go back in the archives. I think it was about six, seven weeks at this point, uh, where either myself or Lady Tiffany has, has dug into some things that she did. She did a wonderful message about being an intentional mother. And so we're going to stay along that vein today, okay? I want you to turn with me in your Bibles, your tablets, whatever device you have, to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter and the 18th verse, okay? Got a little bit of reading. We're going to be doing uh, several scriptures just to support the thought that we're going to go with today. But the first one is 2 Corinthians 6 and 18. And it says, and I will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord God Almighty. Now, we can't talk about a father uh, as Christians and not talk about our heavenly father, the one to whom, whom we, which we all come from. He is our heavenly father. And God is saying right here to the church of Corinth, he says, I will be your father. Don't worry about who's going to provide for you, who's going to keep you straight, who's going to uh, give you advice. I'm going to be your father. Notice, notice how I just define father. Father is not someone who can just procreate and make a baby, but is the one who leads, who guides, who protects who gives guidance to the next stage of life, which simply means you could not have physically fathered somebody, but yet and still you're a father to someone, okay? So we're not talking about just being a sperm donor here. We're talking about somebody that is, that is a true leader and one who pushes people to, to their next and best level, okay? Our next, script, our next scripture is Psalm 103 and 13. It says this, as a father has compassion on his children, so does the Lord have compassion on those who fear him. So, you know, we, we need to uh, expand our view of what a father is. And a lot of, time, a lot of times through a lot of our upbringing bringing in our experience, we think of a father being a, a stern, authoritarian, with this strong, burling voice, the one who's going to pull out a belt and whip you and keep you straight, and the one you don't want to make mad and blah, blah, blah. And, 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 and that is a form because men usually are stern. They love more stern and they're more strict and they're more regimented and regulated than moms. They're loving. They're like, oh, come on. They'll give you a pass and all that stuff. And, and, and all those things are true. But I want us to shape our view of our Heavenly Father, that He's just not this mean bully that's looking for a reason to punish us. But the Word of God says right here is that as a, as a father has compassion on his children, meaning compassion, you have understanding. You have, uh, you, there is, I may be frustrated you, but my love for you outweighs my frustration with you. As a father has compassion on his children, so does the Lord have compassion on those who fear him. Not fear him like, I'm scared you're going to hurt me, but I honor and I reverence you so much. There is, there, is a, there is a reverential fear that I have for you. I am in awe of you, so therefore I don't want to disappoint you. And the Word of God says that God has compassion on those that fear him. 2 Samuel 7, 14 through 15 says this, guys. It says, I will be a father to him. And he'll be a son to me. When he does wrong, I'll discipline him in the usual ways. The pitfalls and the obstacles of his mortal life. But look at this. But I will never remove my gracious love from him. Oh, man, that is amazing. What God is saying, say, hey, I'm full of compassion. Now, there are going to be some times you're going to be hard-headed. There are going to be some times that you're going to mess up. There's going to be some times where you're going to deliberately disobey me, and I'm going to have to correct you. Why? Because a good father doesn't let everything pass and let you be spoiled and let you get away with murder. A good father is going to hold you to a level of accountability. Come on, guys. A good father is one to say, hey, I love you. I got your back, but I've got to let you know you're wrong right here. And so I'm going to have to put you on punishment. I'm going to have to take away this. You're going to have to go through this season to earn 
a, a, a level of trust back, but, but don't get it confused. I'm going to discipline you in the usual ways. You'll go through pitfalls. You'll go through obstacles. But I'll never remove my gracious love from you. That's what the Word of God is saying. I'll never remove my love for you. Don't mistake me letting you deal with the consequences as me hating you. That's a father's love. And, that, and God has given us an example through his son, Jesus Christ, and his love for humanity, how a father is supposed to love. That although you may frustrate me, you may be, wanting, you may be turning my hair gray, and you may be want me to pull whatever hairs I got left out, and you may make me want to say some choice words sometime. But don't let this frustration that you see on my countenance, don't let that make you think that I still don't have a gracious love towards you, which means that sometimes the people we love the most can frustrate us the, can frustrate us the most. <laughs> the ones that are closest to us can cause the most irreparable harm and damage to us, but yet and still, the Word of God says that love covers a multitude of sin. I look beyond that. You know what? You're wrong for that, but I love you so much that I'm going to look beyond that because there is more in you you are not what you did. You are not the mistake. You are not the sin. You committed it, but you're not it. I will not look at you. I will not look at you through the prism of what you did, yet I will look at you for what you are and what you are becoming. That's what a father does. Okay? And so the last thing I want to, what is, uh, the last scripture I want to share with you before I share with you my thought and give you my, my, my insights is Genesis, the first chapter. This all kind of brings everything together. So we're going to start at the 26th verse. It says this. It says, and God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them and God blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over, over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. This is God going back to this, his original and his greatest creation. God said, man, we created this earth, but we need a representation of us. This is God taking counsel with himself. You know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He said, God, let, hey, do, do, what y'all think we should do? Let's make, I got it, let's make this thing called man and let it be an exact replica of us in the earth so it was, it's going to have dominion, it's going to have rule, it's going to be able to name things, uh, animals, and it's going to be able to conquer and rule everything the same way that we rule the whole universe and all the planets that are in the universe. And so God said, it's not enough just to create this earth. This, you know, every day in Genesis, you know, in, at the end of the day, God was finished. The Word, Lord, Word of God said that, uh, that, that God said that it was good. Oh, man, this was good. It, this just pleases me. But when he created man, he said, this is very good because it looks like us. It acts like us. It has the ability and the power like us. And so I want to use for a thought and take a term that, you, that is a kind of pejorative term that people usually say whenever you're displeased with somebody, particularly your, your child, and they're displaying some negative characteristics of their father. Remind me if I get a little country and ghetto for a minute. But what somebody say, you act just like your daddy. And you notice how when people say that, it's not said in a glowing, glowing way. It's got a pinch. It's got a sting to it. That you're acting just like your daddy, whether it's you're acting sorry or you're, you're acting mean or you're not being responsible or you're not following through. That, have have y'all ever heard? Y'all put, put an amen in the chat so, or, or, or raise your hand or, do, or do, do something in the chat if you've ever heard or you've ever used or that term has ever been used on you. And, the, and think about the way that you felt. 
And think about the way that the person felt that, 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 you know what, you are displaying the same toxic tendencies as your sorry daddy, just like your daddy. It's not meant to boost. It's not meant to, to uplift. It's not meant to encourage. It's meant to tear down. It's meant to stab and inflict. It's meant to rip open wounds. But let's take the power back today. Let's take it back. Let's take it back. Somebody type, take it back anything. We're going to take it back that God desires us to act, to move, to breathe, to live just like our daddy. What am I talking about? Am I talking about the, the man that got with your mother, whether, it was, whether they were married or not? No, I'm, no, I'm talking about God said, I am your father. I am the creator. I am the one that knitted you together in your mother's womb. I am the one who said, let there be and there was. I know the way that you take. I am Alpha and Omega. And yes, I am your father. And your objective in life, if you care that much about what people think, is to make them say, you act just like your daddy. <laughs> Somebody type that in there, just like your daddy. You, you got, so our objective is to act just like our daddy. Act just like him. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell on me for a little bit. So, see, uh, I, I've got, I've got uh, two brothers. I'm the youngest of four, but I've got two brothers that are, old, that are over me. And the first thing I'm going to talk about, anybody that knows the Jones family, me, my brothers, my sister, you knew my mom, you know my dad. You know that my father, <laughs> Overseer Bobby Jones, has a very distinctive walk, right? You can pick him out of like a lineup of people. He has a very distinctive walk. He's pigeon-toed and got, got, a little, got a little bop with him, right? Well, guess what? Each of my brothers, we walk just like our daddy. We don't have to try it. it. He didn't have a class one day and said, hey, hey, sons, you know, walk like this. No, we all got a pigeon toe like him. <laughs> we all just got this a certain this swag in our walk just like our daddy. And, what, and, and the reason I'm saying that and I'm talking about me is that we got it. We inherited it from just being around it. And what I'm saying, translating over to our message today, the Father wants us to walk just like our daddy. God, and you know, we say, well, you know, God was a spirit, and he never really walked. But when I talk about walk, I'm talking about how you conduct yourself. That God conducts himself with confidence of knowing who he is and knowing at any moment he can say something and every molecule in the universe will change, will shift. That everything is under his dominion, that everything is under his control. God walks up to and fro among the earth knowing that the that, that our planet earth is nothing but just like a ruby and a jewel on his hand. God walks around with confidence. And there's a certain confidence in a Jones man's walk. <laughs> there's a certain confidence that we learned that as a man, our father raised us up to be, to be proud men, to work hard and, and work for what he want and, and don't bow your head, and, and head when you walk in the room and don't, don't be looking down at the floor, but look at a man in his eyes and, and shake his hand and, 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 and look people directly in the face and represent who you are. You know why? Because you're a Jones man and so you walk a certain way and you, you dress a certain way and you carry yourself and you purport yourself in a certain way. There's a certain level of confidence and pride in who you are because you are a Jones man. And can I dare say there should be a certain level of pride in how you walk and how you conduct yourself and how you walk in rooms and how you interact with people. Why? Because you are a child of God. The same way we are a child of Bobby Jones and there is a certain level of pride and certain level of prestige and I dare say a certain level of swag that goes with it. There should be a certain level of expectation of, of, of swag, of confidence, of, of, of expectation of what you expect from people when you walk in the room and when you interact with people, people not because of who you are but because of whose you are. You should act just like your daddy. You should walk just like your daddy. 
You should conduct yourselves. You should handle business with truth and with honor and with, and with, with honesty. And, and, and your words should mean something. And people shouldn't wonder, you know, are you going to pay me back or are you going to follow through? There's a certain way that king's children, that prince and princesses conduct themselves because they are acutely and definitively aware that they are royalty. So therefore, when I walk in the room, I expect people to curtsy. I expect people to treat me certain ways and if it's not I'm going to correct them because because after all I am royalty and I am supposed to be treated a certain way but not, not because of I, I didn't grow up I was conditioned to this I was told by my father that this is who you are and this is your name and this is your lineage and this is your tradition and this is what you should expect when you wake up and you walk out amongst the world can I tell you today you should walk just like your daddy. You should conduct yourself. You should expect the best out of life. Don't expect the crumbs of life. You should expect the best and to be treated the best for no other reason <laughs> than who your daddy is. Who's your daddy? I ain't talking about somebody walking around on two legs. Who is your father? Who's the one that speaks into your life? Who's the one that gives you your identity? Who gives you your name? Who tells you about yourself? Somebody type, just like daddy, just like daddy. Not only are we to walk like daddy, and I'm going to talk about us a little bit, and we're going to get through it, but there is a distinctive way <laughs> that Jones people talk, that the Jones family talk. When we get together, it is, it, it is like, and it, see, what people don't realize, one of the funniest people, the funniest wit and humor is my dad. People might think, well, he's stirred, blah, 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 but got an amazing wit and sense of humor, right? Well, we all have that, and when we get together, we tickle, we, we tickle each other. It's funny. Now, my children have the same wit. They'll, they'll be listening to something. They'll be watching something, and they'll say something that just cracked me up because they inherited the way that we talk. Okay, we all got a country train because we hang around each other and, and the way we do it. And, and simply by being around the father, you assimilate. You are the sum total of who you hang around, y'all. And so you should talk like your daddy. What is your speech like? When you're met with adversity, what is your immediate response when you talk? What is your response to life's adversity? When someone... Uh, offends you what is your speech like when you get bad news what is your speech like do you talk like the people of this world when you hear about rumors on the job they're laying off are you like oh lord you're getting around the, car, uh, the the water cooler and you're getting in the break room and you're running down management and blah 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 what is your vernacular what is your dialect i know we're all speaking the speaking the same general language of english but every section of a country it has a particular uh, 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 uh dialect how you how you some people speak Gullah down in South Carolina and people in New York have, have a distinctive dialect from people in Mississippi and people in California. Even though we're all in the same country speaking the same language, you can go over to London and they're still speaking English, but they talk like this. And, 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 and they talk a different way in Australia than they do in Canada. Even though we're all speaking the same language, the fact of the matter is we can be all talking the same kingdom talk. But are you talking with conviction? Are you talking with belief? We can all be Christians, but are we speaking the same language of the kingdom? That's my question. Are you talking like your daddy? Because see, when God talks, things change. When God talks, things begin to shift. When daddy begins to speak, nations are moved. The earth quakes. Lions' mouths are shut. Giants are slain and, and monuments are lifted. When God speaks, my question is, do you talk like your daddy? Or do you talk like your favorite reality star? Do you talk like your favorite music mogul or your favorite author? Because... We have to understand that there are power in our words. Our future is going to be shaped by what comes out of our mouth. 
We shall have, we shall eat the fruit of whatever we say. And so it would behoove us to learn how to talk like our daddy. You know, when babies are first learning, the, one of the first words they say is what, y'all? I think it's easy. Dad, dad. Mama is too kind of too hard linguistically to kind of say. But the baby that dad, 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 dad. The first thing they, one of the first things babies learn to say is daddy. Because a lot of those things come from the father. And we should emulate our father in how we talk. In, the word, in our word selection. We should be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. And we should let, let us commit to being more deliberate in the words that we say so that we speak like daddy. I hope somebody's getting something out of this today. I want you to type in that chat line, just like daddy. I want to speak just like daddy. I want to walk just like daddy. The next thing, is we need to believe like daddy. I'm going to continue talking about us. Let me tell you something about Jones, uh, Joneses. We don't go out there getting in a whole lot of other people's business. We don't have a whole lot of opinions about stuff. But what we believe, there is a strong core conviction in what we believe. Almost to a point of just being downright stubborn about it. You can't, when I know what I know what I know, we could, you can talk to your face is blue. I believe what I believe. Do you believe like the Father? What is your belief? See, whatever God speaks, he believes it is about to come to pass. He said his word won't return him to him void. So he believes it so much that he, he, he's, he's entrusting you. I'm going to let you manage the words on this earth realm. And whatever you do in word or deed, if you do it in the name of Jesus, it will be done. Because I honor and I put my word up even above my son's name, Jesus. Do you believe like your daddy believes? I ain't talking about like your favorite preacher say believe. I'm not saying about your, your, your favorite prophet or your favorite author. I'm talking about do you believe like the father believes? Do you believe like your daddy believes? That's my question today. Because that kind of belief shaped the world. That kind of belief will cause cancer to dry up. That kind of belief will cause a wayward son and daughter to be brought back into the fold. That kind of belief, y'all, that is God-like belief. That is God-like walking. That is God-like speaking and vernacular. And when you put those three things together, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, what, what, what is the heart? I'm not talking about your blood pump. I'm talking about your mind, your will, and your emotions. That shapes your belief. And whatever you feed your belief system, are we going to believe what our eyes can see or are we going to believe the report of the Lord? His report says you're healed instead of being sick. His report says you're above only and you're never being beneath. His report says that you shall lend and you shall not borrow. That's what God believes. But do you believe what daddy believes? That's the question today. Our endeavor is to be just like daddy. I want to walk like him. I want to emulate what God does. I want to do what he does because everything he does is successful. So newsflash, if I emulate people who are successful, my probability of having similar results are very high. So let's be like daddy, okay? Hope you're being blessed by this. One last thing I want to share with you. And it comes out of 2 Corinthians, the second chapter, 14th verse. It says this, but thanks be unto God who in Christ always causes us to triumph. And through us, he spreads the fragrance of his knowledge of him everywhere. The last thing is, 
I want to be a winner just like my daddy. I want to be a winner just like the father. He has never tasted defeat. And he said, look, I believe in you so much. I believe in you so much. And I've got so much invested in you. Because look at this. It says here, and through us, he's going to spread the fragrance of the knowledge of him everywhere. God said, I've got a vested interest in you winning. And so when you would fall, when you would fail, when you would fall and falter to the ground, I'm not going to let you lose. I'm going to cause you to win, meaning that I'm going to supernaturally catch you up, meaning that I'm going to supernaturally wipe away the scars of defeat, and I'm going to put you in a place of prominence for no other reason that I need the savor and the fragrance of my goodness to be spread among men. See, what we don't understand is a lot of times we think it's because we're so good. God blesses, blesses us in spite of our lack of goodness. Paul said, my righteous ain't number filthy rags. I haven't accomplished anything. Yet and still, God sees enough in me to bless me and promote me. Newsflash, it ain't because you're so good. We can never earn his grace. We can never earn his favor. But because daddy wants to see us win, he'll make us win. Let me tell you something. I love you. Y'all may be watching, and I love your children, but I don't love you like I love my children. And guess what? My job is to give my children every advantage that I did not have. And so I've made calls to some of my, my, my college colleagues. I've, 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 I've made calls on, uh, on behalf of my children to people that I know. You know why? Because they are my children. And so they have favor with me that you do not. And I love your little, your, your, your little ookie bookie and your, and, your, and your child, but I don't love them like I love my child because they are my children and they have special favor with me and because I am their daddy there are special things that I will do there are extra things that I will go there are things that I will do without to see them get ahead because daddy loves them and daddy wants to and daddy has a vested interest in them doing well and let me tell you something God has an invested interest in you doing well so much that he will skip you ahead of other people. He will, he will take you from the back and put you in the front. He will take you from being on the bottom and he'll put you on the top and he will breathe on you and everybody else is drying up around you. And yet still you are not only surviving, but you are thriving in the middle of, and there's no other reason <laughs> than who your daddy is. That's the only reason. God is the originator of nepotism. Nepotism is having preferential treatment and favor over somebody because of their relation to you. Yeah, God has nepotism. He favors us. And so we are at, a, we are at an unfair advantage over those who are not his children. And so we should win like daddy wins, y'all. God wins. Everything he does is win. When Jesus went to the cross, it played into the ultimate plan that God had to redeem us back. So even when it looked like he lost, he still won. God is a winner. Our daddy is a winner. And guess what? Daddy didn't give birth to no losers. My father instilled confidence in us that you're Jones men. You're a Jones woman. And we don't take no wood nickels. <laughs> we don't scratch when we don't itch. And we don't laugh when it ain't funny. And we have carried that ideal out through our whole lives. That we are winners. We are to res be respected. We are uh, to, to be held in high regard. Not because we, we are entitled to it, but because we, go, we come in a room and we command it. That's what we got from our Father. And what I'm telling you is... There are certain levels that you should be expecting the way you should live, the way that you should be in your health, the way you should be in your finance, the way you should be in your relationship. You should live no less than what your daddy lives. In fact, you should exceed what your daddy has done. My endeavor is to put my children in a position 
that they totally surpass what me and their mother has tried to accomplish. That's my job. And if I don't do that, then I feel like I failed as a father. And it's my job to sweat, to toil, to give my children a leg up the same way that my parents gave me a leg up. And we should con- commit today on Father's Day to do what daddy does and act just like daddy. I believe, y'all, let me tell you, there are many examples of people that we can emulate. And there are some great people that have lived throughout history, Martin Luther King and Einstein and, and you know, uh, 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 President Roosevelt and all these people and uh, uh, all these great people that have accomplished great things, but there is no greater person that I would want to emulate than God the Father. Why? Because his track record is good, y'all. Never lost. Never tasted defeat. Has always ended up on top. And when this is all over, God and his word will be standing for time and eternity. That's somebody I want to be like. That's somebody I want to walk like. That's somebody I want to talk like. That's somebody I don't mind believing like them because they get results when they believe. Then yes, that's somebody who I want to win like. You don't want to win dirty. You don't want to win by having to put step on somebody else in order to get to the, to the podium. God said, when I win, everybody around me can win. I share with the whole community. And I want to challenge you today that as we are reflecting on fathers and we are reflecting and appreciating those who protect and those who guide and those who, who, who sometimes uh, puts us in our place and is stern with us but loves us enough to still give us gracious love. As we are contemplating that today, I want you to think and I want you to commit that, God, I'm going to study your ways. This is a season where I'm going to start studying your ways, the good, the bad, the things that feel good, the things that are challenging. I'm going to study your ways. And when I learn a little secret sauce of your ways, I'm going to start acting like you. I'm going to start talking like you. I'm going to start believing like you. And, yes, it will result in me starting to win on a consistent basis just like you win. Let's do it, y'all. Let's do it just like daddy. Come on, let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for Father's Day. We thank you, Lord, for being our heavenly father that loves us, that protects us, that corrects us, that does everything for our good, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us a template. You have given us a roadmap to which we can emulate. And God, we just want to be just like you. We want to walk like you with a certain level of confidence. We want to talk like you with a certain level of belief and, con- and conviction in our voice. We want to believe like you that everything that comes out of our mouth will come to pass. And yes, God, we want to win just like you. God, you are the ultimate winner. You are the ultimate champion. You've never tasted defeat. You've always won. And because we are your children, you command, you're calling us up to be winners. You're calling us up to be ones who declare your word and see it to be established, God. You're calling us up to be the head and not the tail, to be royalty, to take our place and to be the sons and daughters of a king that you've called us to be. Lord, make us ever mindful, God, that as good as we are, we can be more like you every day. Lord, show us where we are come up short. Show us where we need to pull things together and things we need to let go and things we need to assimilate and to add to our lives, God. And, Lord, when we do those things, God, we'll be a little less like the old version of us, God, and we're going to inch our way step by step, inch by inch, to be more like you. We thank you, Lord. We bless and we pray a special prayer for all fathers. Those that who, are, uh, who have guided us, who worked their hands to the bone, that worked long hours to provide, that may not have done everything right and not been the most affectionate God, but they were good, solid people that could be depended on, that when you needed them, they were there. Lord, we pray a special prayer for them. Thank you, Lord, that you keep them among us. Lord, raise up more fathers, not just daddies, not just sperm donors, God, but raise us up to be the fathers that you called us to be, God. There are a lot of fatherless children. Lord, they need mentorship. They need somebody to guide them. They need somebody to encourage them. They need somebody to be stern and get in their face and let them know you can do better. 
There's something about when a man takes his place. God, so I thank you, Lord, for squeezing hearts and convicting us and allowing us to stand up in our rightful place as men of God, as priests of our household, priests of our community, God. Not looking for somebody to come rescue us, God. We are the answer that we've been looking for. And it's when we act, we speak, we move, we believe, and we win just like you. God, we bless you. We love you. And we thank you for the word today that it falls on good ground and produces much fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. We pray that you were blessed by the word today. Give us some likes. Give us some hearts. Give us some shares. Let us know that it was a blessing to you. Do something good for daddy. Make a mistake. Don't make him go out there and be on that grill, y'all. This is his day. Let him sit right down and watch and watch some, uh, some NBA basketball or something. Y'all treat him good. Let him know you appreciate him and we love you. God bless you and we'll see you next week. Next week, y'all. We are going to be worshiping on Sunday at the park, okay? At the park, Triad Park. We're going to have some commercials come, uh, going. There's going to be a sign-up in, uh, in the chat right now. We want you to sign up. Uh, we're going to have food, fun, games, and fellowship. It's going to be Sunday, 1030 a.m. at Triad Park at Shelter Number 1. We want you to be there as we go further in the Lord. We love you. God bless you. Have an enormously great week as we act just like Daddy, okay? God bless you. We Love you. Peace. What a challenge and what an awesome reminder that God is intentional. He's intentional in his plan. He's intentional in his actions. He's intentional in his word. He's intentional in his love. And because of that, we have great hope. Pastor Tony challenged us to reflect over our lives and think about those things that there were so much question mark towards it mm -hmm. and see how God actually worked it out because he's intentional. Mm -hmm. And if you reflect and if there's something you're going through right now and you don't quite understand it, that's okay too because Pastor Tony challenged us to trust in the intentional love and plans that God has for our lives. Yeah. He, he, he might cause it. Hmm. He might allow it. Mm -hmm. He might use it. But he is never surprised never. by it. So... I wonder if there's somebody listening today that has been questioning kind of that love that God might have. Maybe you've seen the love that he has for everybody else, but you're questioning it for yourself. And I'm going to pray this prayer with you. My husband's going to pray this prayer with you that you'll remember that love that God has for you, that he sent his son for you. And that it doesn't matter what, you, what you've done, what you look like, what you're doing currently. He loves you now. So we want to extend uh, that offer. If you haven't said yes to Christ yet, Christ's love in your life, we want to extend that offer to you today to receive salvation. And if you're in that place where you think, ah, I'm too dirty, God can't love me, and you're kind of in a backslidden state, we're going to invite you back into the fold because the word says that he's married to the backslider. So that means you, none of us can escape that love that God has for us. So let's pray now. Yes, great intentional God who has great love towards us. We thank you now thank you, that we've Jesus. been reminded that your love is intentional to us, that your love is reaching out for us, that mm -hmm. even on this day, hearing this word you, was an intentional moment for us to come to this point of prayer where we come to you and we ask you, God, the intentional mm -hmm. one, to receive us. Yes. God, we want to receive the love that you have given that is free for all if we would just stretch out and reach for it. Mm -hmm. And so God, we receive that love even now. God, we believe that you're intentional. We love, believe that you intentionally love us. Yes, and so God, I thank you because of the plan of salvation that you had when you came and you lived and you died on a cross for our sins so that we could be reconciled back to you and reconciled back to the Father. I thank you that we have trust yeah. and can believe that you saved us. Yes. And we believe now, Lord God, in what you did. We have faith in that. Yes. And we believe even now that you have ordered our steps mm -hmm. and that you are married to us and that you will keep us until the end of times. Mm -hmm. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen Jesus and amen. 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 If you accepted Christ's love into your heart today, the word of God declares that you are saved. And if you have any questions, feel free to call that number on the screen. And there is a minister waiting to talk to you. So, yes, we have come to the end of our service. 
We pray that you have been filled, restored, that you've been rejuvenated and you're ready for the week ahead. Remember, connect with us because you can replay this word at any time you might need it and you'll be able to share it with a friend. So until we see you next time, bye. Bye.